In today's video, we're teaching all about ISO, one of the three fundamental controls you have over your camera and how ISO affects the images that you take in a really fundamental way. After all, if you want to understand how to use your DSLR or mirrorless camera and just take better images, learning how to shoot in manual is a great place to start. But before we jump into all that, we want to introduce ourselves. I'm Hunter. And I'm Sarah. And we're Hunter and Sarah Photography, a professional husband and wife wedding photography team. We're also educators, and our goal is to help photographers to build strong foundations in both their businesses and their personal lives so that they can run profitable and sustainable photography businesses. So super quickly, before we jump in, just in case this is the very first video you've ever seen from us, we do wanna make sure you know that this video is just one in a whole series all about shooting in manual. So last month, we actually began this video series by introducing you to Aperture, and then by teaching you how to actually use it for portrait and wedding days. And then earlier this month, we did the same for shutter speed. So if you missed any of those videos and you wanna keep learning about shooting in manual once you're done with this video, then the link to the entire playlist is up here. But for now, let's dive into ISO and what it actually is. Very simply, ISO is how sensitive your image sensor is to light or how much ambient light it will pick up. So back in the days of film, you would actually buy a roll of film with a specific set ISO. So like ISO 400 film is an example. Then if you wanted to increase or decrease the ISO, you know, if you went into a darker or a lighter environment, making your camera more or less sensitive to light, you'd have to literally shoot the entire roll of, you know, 400 speed film and then take that roll out of your camera and then put in a new roll of 3200 speed film. And you basically then had to shoot that entire roll before you could switch to another ISO. Yeah. Luckily, in the age of digital photography, we can just adjust our camera's sensitivity to light by changing the ISO with like the simple click of a button or the turn of a dial. So whether you have a DSLR or a mirrorless camera, making your camera more sensitive or less sensitive to light, brightening and darkening your images is literally as simple as spinning a dial or if you have maybe a more beginner camera, often navigating to your camera's menu with a few clicks of a few buttons. So in case this is helpful, which it probably will be, here is a chart with a handful of common ISOs. Just like with aperture and with shutter speed, you do not need to memorize these numbers, mm -hmm. but just understand that lowest ISOs are usually measured in the hundreds and higher ISOs are usually measured in the thousands or even tens of thousands. So now that you know sort of on a very basic level what ISO is, let's talk about what it actually does. Just like with aperture and shutter speed in our other videos, uh, ISO has two main effects and the first is, of course, light. So as you increase your ISO, so as you go from ISO 200 to ISO 400 to 800, your camera will become more and more sensitive to light. So that means without changing your aperture or your shutter speed, your images will just basically magically get brighter. Yeah. On the other hand, as you decrease your ISO, so like taking your ISO from 400 down to 200 or to 100, your camera sensor will become less sensitive to light, which makes your images darker. So here is that same diagram that we just showed a moment ago, only this time with ISO's effect on the exposure of your image taken into account. And for all the sort of more visual learners out there, we're gonna pick up the same analogy that we, we've been using throughout this entire series to give you a more intuitive sense of how ISO works. So as a reminder, in this analogy, light is represented basically by water that's falling from the sky. Your lens is the hose that brings that light towards your camera's image sensor, which is represented by the bucket in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. And the water that reaches these buckets is basically like the light that eventually reaches your image sensor and makes up an image. When we were talking about aperture, we asked you to think about it as increasing the size at the opening at the front of the hose. And then when we talked about shutter speed, we told you to think about how long the hose is open versus how long it's closed. Now with ISO, it's the buckets themselves that were that are gonna be changing. So when you increase the ISO on your camera, it's like making the buckets larger. The same amount of water is flowing through the hose during the same amount of time, but suddenly the buckets can hold more of that water. So with your camera, increasing the ISO means that even though the same amount of light is coming in through your lens and hitting your image sensor, your sensor can simply just capture more of that light. On the other hand, when you decrease the ISO on your camera, it's like making the buckets smaller. Even if the hose and how long it stays open stays the same, the buckets just won't be able to hold as much light. Likewise, decreasing your ISO means that even if the same amount of light is reaching your image sensor, less of that light will be picked up by your camera. 
And finally, here's an example with actual imagery. So you can just get a very simple visual sense of what we're talking about. The image on the left was taken with an ISO of 500 and the image on the right was taken with an ISO of 2000 with basically all the other settings the same. So hopefully it's pretty obvious just from looking at these that the image with the lower ISO is much darker than the image with the higher ISO. Just like with aperture and with shutter speed, ISO not only affects your light, but it does have one other effect on your final images. And with ISO, it is the graininess or like the noise of your image. So it, it's, if it sounded almost like too good to be true that you could basically just turn a dial and your images would magically get brighter or darker without affecting your aperture or your shutter speed, it sort of is too good to be true because as you increase your ISO and your camera becomes more and more sensitive to light and your images become more and more exposed or brighter, it also begins to introduce more and more graininess into the image. That's really the trade-off. Yeah, and it's kind of difficult to explain graininess, which is also referred to as noise. So we're just gonna show you two images. The image on the left was taken outdoors and in natural light at ISO 50, which is about as low and grain-free as our professional cameras will go. On the other hand, the image on the right was taken indoors at night in a much darker environment and without flash. So our ISO was at 4,000, a significantly higher ISO. And while this might not look like that much of a difference at first, if we zoom in on these two images, you can see really quickly how the image with a higher ISO feels like gritty and grainy and it's a little bit less sharp and maybe a little bit less clear. You know, it's almost like someone spilled clear grains of sand all over the image, which is why it's referred to as graininess. And that's what Hunter means by like the trade-off that you get with ISO. Without a flash or slowing down your shutter speed to the point that the entire image is just like a blur, uh, we would never have been able to capture this indoor dancing photo without a higher ISO. But as you can see, in exchange for all of that extra light, the trade-off is lots of grain. On the other hand, when we were shooting outside, we didn't need to add extra light. We were able to keep our ISO low and avoid noise altogether. So finally, in order to help you tie all of these things to together, here is that chart one final time, but this time with the graininess and the noise taken into account. And by the way, if you think this is helpful, we hope that you will screenshot this and sort of refer to it next time you're out shooting. Yeah. And if this all felt like a little theoretical to you, that's okay. Mm -hmm. This video was all about helping you to understand what ISO is and how it affects your imagery. Next week, we are gonna do a deeper dive into ISO part two and give a few more like real world examples and we kind of share how we think about setting our ISO on portrait sessions and on wedding days. But for now, that's it for this week. Yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. We genuinely hope that this video has helped you move one step closer to understanding your camera and mastering manual photography. Now, if you found this video helpful and you wanna to continue to learn from us, we would really encourage you, of course, to like and comment and subscribe and do all the things that makes YouTube love us, um, but also to join our Facebook community. Um, it's called Mastering the Wedding Photography Biz with Hunter and Sarah. It's really just a community of other newer photographers who are building their businesses as we all come alongside each other, challenge, encourage, and uh, learn from each other along the way. Yeah, we share new content in that group almost every day, as well as just updates when we post new videos. So like Sarah said earlier, we will be back next week with the next part in the series, but until then, happy shooting.